back to my channel so for today's video i just want to share to you guys my k1 visa timeline from the time we sent the packet until i got it on hand so if you are interested with this kind of video just keep on watching so i'll try my best to speak in english guys but um just want to let you know that I am not good in English, my grammar is not perfect, so please don't make fun of it. I just want to, um, ex I will just explain it in English, that way um, everyone can understand. And yeah. So um, here is our visa timeline, guys. Um, first, I just want to uh, share to you guys what are the following documents that we sent. Uh, that we include in the packet so for petitioner's document we have the payment of 535 dollars uh, the form i29f and um the form g325a so by the way they said that you don't really need to include this because it's already on the form i29f but we that the time that we you know we were fi filling out our form we didn't know it yet so we were able to include this form and then g1145 e notification of application or petition acceptance um two by two passport photograph with the name at the back proof of uh, u.s citizenship or birth certificate of your petitioner uh, petitioner's passport bio page and letter of intent to marry and that's for the petitioner's documents for the alien fiance or the beneficiary, um, two by two passport photograph with name at the back, a form G325A and um, my passport bio page, my letter of intent to marry my petitioner and my birth certificate. So again, guys, you, uh, you don't really have to include the form G325A. And then for our proof of evidence, of genuine relationship we have uh, the proof of having met in the past for two years which are our pictures together his passport entry and exit stamp our chat logs and calls and um, receipts when he was here and also if you have any remittances yeah remittances we include it and that's it guys and by the way, if your petitioner is divorced, please don't forget to include their divorce papers as well on the packet. It's better to be honest. And also, if they have any arrest records or criminal history, um, no matter how long it is, um, don't forget to include that because I have a friend that they tried to hide it and she got denied because um the immigration found out that um her fiance or her petitioner has some arrest record in the past so if you have any if the, your petitioner has any arrest records or criminal records don't forget to include it it's better to be honest than not and um if for example the the copy of that record is no longer av available um just uh, request a letter saying that you know that um that uh, record is no longer available from the county and with a seal in it and th that that's fine that's fine also for the divorce decree so yes yeah, so um we sent our packet april 23rd of 2018 through fedex and um april 25th of 2018 we received our NOAA one soft copy um they sent it to my fiance's email and may 5th 2018 we received our NOAA one hard copy and then october 15th of 2018 we received our NOAA two and november 21st 2018 i called the nvc and um they gave me my manila case number so um some people said that you have to wait for like two at least two weeks before calling nvc but me i waited um 
for more than a month before I called the NVC. So, um, November 28, 2018, um, it says still in transit. November 29th of 2018, guys, um, we, my fiancé actually received an email from the NVC. And yes, you need that NVC letter with your Manila case number when, you, uh, when you're going to do your medical. So don't forget to bring that on your medical. Third, it finally says ready and December 12 and 13 of 2018, I went to St. Luke's uh, and um, I did my medical and I passed it. So I also have um, a video of my medical experience. So if you are interested to check it, um, I'll put the link in the description box below or in the comment section. I shared, um, um, you know, my, my full experiences during my medical process and I also showed some uh, proof of you know what are the things that they did to me and there's like you know the documents that they're gonna ask you to fill out stuff like that so I also showed it on my video so if you are interested to check it out um, go check it out <laughs> And then, yes, December 12 and 13, I passed my medical. Guys, um, now I am going to share to you my interview experience. So, my scheduled interview is January 24th, 2019 at 7.40 a.m. So, that's my time. But I arrived, I arrived there. Uh, I arrived at the U.S. Embassy around 6.30 a.m. And the security guards are already calling the 7.40 a.m. scheduled. So, as soon as I get there, I just, you know, went straight ahead in the line and um, show my show my interview appointment confirmation to the lady that was there. And then she just checked it and then we, I proceed to the other line. But um, on the second line, you have to ready your passport and your DS-160, just the first page. And... Um, so the lady gave me a Ziploc where I need to put my passport and then um, and then I present my DS-160 confirmation. Yep, DS-160 and um, the lady put some stickers in it. Um, that sticker is like uh, the information that, that in that sticker were like um, your pre-screening, finger scanning, uh, final interview and releasing so they're gonna have to check it so because you're gonna have to show that on every window and they're gonna have to check it so it's like your you know whatever you call it <laughs> it's hard to explain and um so yeah so after that after she put that sticker with the code or your number in it um you just have to get inside um you are not allowed to bring any gadgets, including power bank, headset, yep, chargers, cell phones. You are not allowed to bring any of that kind of stuff. Uh, and yes, so um, once you get inside, um, there's going to be people that's going to assess you on where you're going to, you're going to see it because, um, on your DS-160, the, st the sticker that I am talking about, um, you know, there's a letter in it. So it's either your A, B, C. So mine is, I belong to the C section. I just call it C station or section, whatever. So uh, we sit there in that section. And yes, and um, so you just have to wait for your turn for the pre-screening. So the first thing is the pre-screening interview filipina consul um window number 32 so she asked me uh my ds 160 uh confirmation by the way your your ds 160 confirmation page you always have to show that in every window so the questions that she asked me if i did i receive any mail from the u.s embassy and i said um was it the eligibility letter? And she said, yes. Um, did you receive any 
um, attachment aside from eligibility letter and ICDS, some copies of our form I-29F. And she said, yes, okay, that's good to hear. And then she asked me about my name, my birthday, my petitioner's name, and she asked me if I'm previously married. I said no. Do I have kids? I said no. Have I traveled abroad? I said no. Um, did I apply applied for a U.S. visa vi before? I said no. And then she asked me, um, what are my parents' names? And I, you know, I just, um, I, I just, I just said, I told her about, you know, what are my parents' name? And with my mom, um, I, I told her my mom's maiden name, not married name, because. Uh, she's gonna base it on your Senomar copy. Yep. So, yes. And then she asked me, do I have proof of relationship such as pictures together, conversations, receipts, and etc. And I said, yes, I have. Um, do you need it? And she said, no. Um, just asking you just in case the American consul will ask you those um, documents. And I said, okay. So the documents that she asked me are my NBI, my birth certificate, uh, my MRV sleep, that's from the BPI when you pay your visa fee, that's called MRV sleep. She took that, my Senomar, and my affidavit of support. So for the affidavit of support, um, I have a copy of my fiancé's three, uh, no, uh, the three years of his ITR, uh, 2015, 16, and 17, but she only took the recent one, which is the 2017 ITR. But good thing I have uh, pay stubs for, um, I, have, I have, you know, his pay stubs for the year 2018, and that shows his entire income for the year 2018, and she took that pay stubs also. And, of course, the medical result. She asked those uh, documents from me, and then she gave me back my DS-160, and then she put a check on the small box on my DS-160 on the sticker that the, you know, that was being sticked to your DS-160. She put a check in it, and, she, and then she asked me to proceed to window number 57 for finger scanning. So... I proceed to window number 57 and then the lady um, asked me my DS-160 paper and then she just asked me about my name and my birthday and then she asked me uh, for my four fingers left, I scan it and then this one, right, the, your four fingers right and then the last one is your two thumbs, just have to scan it and then she returned back my DS-160 and um, there's a, there's someone that's going to guide you on where to go next. Just show your DS-160 paper and then the person that's going to guide you or going to tell you where to sit. So um, I just sit there and wait for my final interview. So I waited for like 45 minutes because there's a lot of people in there. Um... So after 45 minutes, it's finally my turn to shine. <laughs> so um, I went to the window number 65. He is an American consul. He looks he looks strict, but he's really nice. He's, he was really nice. And um, he asked me my DS-160 paper, the first page. Your confirmation, your DS-160 confirmation. And then he asked me to raise my right hand and, you know, she, he just said, like, do I promise to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? You know, that kind of stuff. And I said, yes. So he asked me the following questions. My name, my birthday, um, am I previously married? Uh, did I travel abroad before? I said, no. Did I apply for a visa before? I said, no. Do I have kids? I said no, and um, I think after like two minutes, because he was like busy typing, after four minutes, 
he said, okay, I am approving your visa. And then he gave me the two pamphlets, which are this. He gave me this about domestic violence. So he gave me this and I was like, oh my God, thank you so much, sir. Have a great day. You are such a blessing. I told him that because, you know, I was so excited. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. I'm not done yet. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. My bad. <laughs> and then he was, you know, explaining, okay, um, if you experience any domestic violence um, in the United States, um, all the information that you need to call is here. Don't forget to call 911, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, he asked me to get the uh, one of these. And this this one is sitting outside the window. So he asked me, um, you know, to, this is for like, you know, where, you know, um, an instruction on, instruction uh, for your delivery address. So I didn't really, you know, I didn't call this number because I, already put my delivery address on my DS-160 and on my when I scheduled my interview so I didn't change my delivery address you know so yes this is what he gave me and then so January 25 uh, my status is issued and then that's Friday January 25 2019 and then January 29, I tried to track my uh, visa use on the to-go website using my UID number. Um, you you will find it on your appointment, your interview appointment confirmation UID, like below, below the confirmation. You'll you'll find it there, and um, that's the number that I used to track on the to-go website and. Boom, it says that um, it was delivered around 9 o'clock in the morning and then it arrived at to go Moa branch around 3, yeah, 3.01 p.m. So I check it like around, when I check it morning, it says like, you know, it's still on the way. And then around 3.30 p.m., I check it again on January 29th and it says it's undelivered because reason because you know it is for pickup so I you know I never waste time I went to Moa to go branch and get my visa so uh, for pickup you just need to provide one ID one copy of your ID and that's it so I received my visa packet here it is Sharon. so this is my visa packet yep and then by the way guys i just you know i just got a little in this side just in order for me to get my passport and my passport and yes yeah, so that's my so that's my visa timeline so um by the way guys the reason why it took it took us nine months to finish everything is because during my medical my medical um i didn't i didn't like scheduled my my uh interview and medical at the same time you know i i scheduled first my medical because uh, i want to make sure that um i'll i will pass my medical i want to make sure that there is no problem and if in case there is a problem i you know i don't have to like rescheduled my interview appointment anymore so i scheduled my medical first before schedule i schedule my medical first and i make sure that i pass my medical before scheduling my interview so and by the way guys the american coast will never ask me any documents anymore and guys i just want to thank lord god so much um because he guided me through the entire process, um, the waiting is, the waiting is, you know, is kind of long, but it's all worth it. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lord. And you guys will be the next. And yes, I hope you learned something from this experience who are, you know, for, for those people who are 
um, going through the same process as me. And I hope this video will help you guys. And thank you so much. And see you again on my next one. God bless everyone. And good luck on your visa journey. Bye.